they didn't tell me anything other than what he was. They said he was he was just a good guy. He was a family man. Uh, he was hardworking, and he was apparently funny too. So there's that. I think my dad, he just always put others first, and I think that he'd want everyone to do the same. I would say my dad's legacy is just to be a good person, be kind to everyone, help everyone. I think my dad's legacy lives on through people that surrounded him in his life. And I don't know, I try, I try and live like what I heard he lived like a little bit. and vowing to come back, fight back. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. Roughly 100 babies were born after their fathers died during the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001. They are known as the children of 9-11, and People Magazine has been following their lives from the beginning, sharing the inspiring stories of their remarkable families, stories of heroism, resilience, and hope. The children, all of them, are what comes next. The healing after the pain. They're the love. They're the embodiment of, of what people in love create. To commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9-11, four of the children and their families will be featured in a new documentary, Rebuilding Hope, The Children of 9-11. Produced in association with People, the film premieres September 7th on the Magnolia Network, streaming exclusively on Discovery Plus and the Magnolia app. I feel like if I can go to the top of this building, my anxieties will no longer exist. At least that's the goal. Can you come see market? My name is Alexis Magala, and my dad was a firefighter who died in the South Tower on 9-11. My name is Ronald Dutrell Milam Jr. Uh, my dad's name was Ronald Dutrell Milam Sr. Uh, he was an Army major, and he died in the Pentagon on September 11th. My name is Jamie Michelle Gartenberg Piela. My dad was James Gartenberg. He worked in commercial real estate in the Twin Towers, and he died on September 11th. My name is Gabriel Dick. My father was Ariel Lewis Jacobs, and he died in the North Tower on September 11th. My dad was very selfless. I like to think of him as someone who always put others first, and I also see him as very brave. Obviously, my dad was so brave. I don't know how he was able to get that call and go to work that morning and then just see the two towers standing in front of him and just know that he had to walk in those and probably knew that he was never gonna come out. Yeah, I mean, my, my father was, was an inspiring person um, to begin with. He didn't graduate college, but he was very successful in his field. And from what I hear, very, very happy um, at the young age that he died at. People tell me I look like him a lot, you know. I mean, he is my dad, so. Uh, but yeah, I get that a lot. A lot of people say I actually look just like him and there's a really strong resemblance between the two of us. And I love hearing that I look like him. Um, makes me happy knowing that, I don't know, we like kind of share something. I don't know what, but something. My mom also says that uh, I, my personality is kind of like his in the way that uh, she says I'm nonchalant, but like that, yeah. People tell me I remind them of him like a scary amount, especially my mom. Looks, but like mannerisms apparently, and my sense of humor. Recently, uh, I've been learning more about him because we've been, we've reconnected with the family, his family uh, from Oklahoma. They're now in Dallas, and they would show me videos and stuff like that. I never heard his voice or seen him, uh, you know, just talk or react to people in person. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know, I thought he would, because all his pictures, he's mainly, he's mainly just, you know, straight-faced. There's only like a few of him smiling, because uh, 
like I said, mainly a serious person. So uh, it was cool to see, you know, how he was when he was around people. I guess I stayed connected to my biological father by just continuing his legacy as a person in my family and living my own life and creating my own path. I feel the most connected to my dad when I'm around his family. Um, just being with all of them, knowing that their personalities are just like his, kind of makes me feel that he's there. And again, just knowing that I look so much like him, I think we're connected in a way. Losing my biological father right before I was born, I kind of just grew up with the perspective of understanding that life's not perfect, things happen, the world isn't fair, but no matter what happens to me, to my family, to anyone, you kind of just have to keep pushing through. Um, what we're all given so much in this world and kind of just making the most of it all the time because you really know what, you, you really never know what is going to happen next. So it's kind of just shown me to appreciate everything. Yeah, I think, I think losing my dad so early was really formative in that I learned uh, coping at a very young age. It's a really hard skill, uh, I'd assume, to learn as an adult, so I'm oddly thankful that I was able to grasp that concept as a child. Um, yeah. I think experiencing loss at such a young age made me realize that in life you were gonna encounter so many challenges, but most likely will always come over, overcome them. And I feel like it's made me a stronger person. I wouldn't call it strength as much as I would call it resilience. Um, because people always, uh, around this, around September, you know, during school, grade school and everything, because um, people would know. And so uh, they wouldn't, they would, they would just, you know, they would always connect that to me. And I would just always, uh, I would just think of it as like, that is, that's something that has happened to me, but it's not me, you know? It's hard to explain. It's some people believe in God or the greater power or whatever. I try and talk to my father, I guess, when I'm having a hard time because I know he's dead and gone and there's nothing I can do about that. But I also know he's out there somewhere and I can't talk to him, but I know he's out there guiding me along my path in life. I don't, I don't know, I'd say five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, whatever, I was a lot more into that like spiritual kind of like way of remembering people. Um, and, I, and I think now my way of honoring my dad especially is just by being alive and, and being happy and, and doing everything that I want to do. Over the past five years, I've started to view life kind of as live every moment to the fullest every day like it's your last because you just never know what could happen. And with that being said, I actually just went skydiving and that was the most surreal moment of my life. It was one of the best days I've ever had. That was insane, that was really crazy. When you're skydiving, it feels like you're in the middle of nowhere, but also you're like everywhere. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what was going through my head. I feel like I was just enjoying the moment and just like living my life. Anniversaries are sort of weird. I don't know. In, in my opinion, like every day is an anniversary of something. The September 10th is 364 day anniversary. Um, so, I mean, September 11th is obviously like a bigger day and I'm thinking about it more, but only because that's the, you know. I think, I think anniversaries are very important to the population as a whole um, because I don't, 
I personally don't want to think about 9-11 every day, um, and I wouldn't imagine anyone else does either. Um, so having one day throughout the year that people can, you know, think about it and grieve and process it in their own ways, I think is something that we do as a society really well. I want people to feel a connection to this day, and I think when kids like us tell our stories, when people hear real stories from real people, kind of like them, closer to their age, it's a lot easier to connect and understand what happened and feel something towards it. Yeah, I, I suppose I did this uh, film because I wanted to see how my own thoughts uh, have shifted over the years. Um, and I, I don't know if people, I, th I, think, I think people should, should take away that it's, it's cool to have a balance of like feeling it and living. Like it's okay to feel your losses and live your life at the same time. I hope people will see us as our own, own, like our own person and not as, you know, that event that happened, uh, not as just, you know, the kids of 9-11, but just, you know, people that have moved on from that as well. I kind of want people to just see that we are our own people and there's more to us than just our stories. I want people to just see who we actually are and I feel like a lot of people tend to walk on eggshells when like talking about 9-11 to me and I just want people to know that you don't have to do that. Something I want people to take away from the film is a feeling of hope or in anything in life to understand that things happen but no matter what it is we can rebuild ourselves as people, as a country, just as anything, just a sense of hope.